Can amending laws help deal with police brutality? Concerns have been raised over the rising number of suspects who are dying at the hands of the police. Statistics by police watchdog IPID show that police implicated in violent acts too often go free. Viewfinder investigative journalist Daniel Knutzer and other organizations recently made submissions to Parliament on the IPID Amendment Bill. Knutzer speaks to us now. Uh, Daniel, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on the SA Morning. Perhaps let's start with the reasons why this particular you know, article and investigative piece was written, why Viewfinder found it important to actually focus on this issue. Uh, thank you, Tammy. So, yeah, the research goes back to about 2019, and uh, the reason really informing uh, the need for this investigation is the fact that it's evident in the Watchdog IPID's um, annual report statistics that police brutality really is a pervasive, widespread, um, multi-province uh, problem in South Africa. And not only that, the statistics showed us that the watchdog's kind of completion and the outcomes of these cases um, pertain to massive uh, un and non-accountability, a failure of discipline, and certainly also of criminal proceedings uh, following from these cases. And so I guess um, the findings of that investigation pointed us to two very particular drivers of non-accountability within the police service. The one is that the watchdog agency IPAD is absolutely overwhelmed with the number of cases it takes in every year and its inability to properly process and investigate these. Um, I've been saying to other interviewers, the statistics might show that IPAD takes in five to 6,000 cases every year, but its actual workload is closer to 46,000 or in excess of actually, when considering the massive backlogs it's been um, accumulating over the years and uh, the cases that it has to monitor and perform administrative court disciplinary duties on post-investigation, post-completion. And so the IPAD being overwhelmed is the one issue. And secondly, we found also that police disciplinary structures and indeed the functionaries, the managerial class within the police, if you will, uh, had a real apathy and reluctance to both proactively enforce discipline against officers that are sometimes accused of very serious crimes and acts of brutality, but also um, in terms of initiating disciplinary proceedings on the few cases where IPAD, the police watchdog, does make findings and recommendations on the basis of prima facie evidence of wrongdoing. Um, here we see often that police supervisors, police commanders simply fail to initiate disciplinary proceedings or um, soft pedal them or whitewash them. And there's been no oversight of that process in the last 10 years or so at least since IPAD was established in 2012. And um, those two drivers, more so than any other factor, um, underwrites the continuation, the enabling environment for the persistence of brutality and often escalating. Um, with one individual police officer not being held accountable, we've seen how that enables them to escalate the severity of their uh, misconduct. And, um, yeah, that is something that we believe that the law change, the IPAD Act Amendment Bill, can address and can also fail to address if amendments are poorly considered. Take us through, Daniil, some of the highlights that this bill uh, proposes, and specifically around the issue of which cases IPID should be investigating um, and which cases can then perhaps be passed on to uh, the police. Exactly. So we've essentially made the argument and come at it from the point of view that the police really have a fundamental duty to ensure high standards of conduct, integrity, and discipline within its ranks. So the current status quo of the police outsourcing all of these investigations, which um, relate to assault cases, torture cases, rape cases, shooting cases, and um, killings and deaths in custody by the police, outsourcing all of these cases 
um, to the police watchdog and essentially washing its hands of any responsibility in terms of acting on it is wrong and is counter the police's responsibility to ensure integrity and using its discipline regulations to make sure that police officers accused in this misconduct are processed quickly and effectively. So what we've argued in the bill is that IPID's investigative mandate currently enforces on it that it investigates a massive range of misconduct and brutality allegations. Um, in the 46,300 odd cases that I've mentioned as currently on its workload, we've identified that assault, which often are common or what you would classify as slightly less minor assaults than with the intent to do grievous bodily harm, and firearm related complaints, uh, which often don't amount to attempted murder. Those two categories alone account for 74% of IPAD's massive workload. And what it does is it overwhelms the 180 or so investigators that are dotted around the country and prevents these investigators from really um, concentrating substantive attention and investigative capacity on the very high impact, very serious cases of criminality. So when, so you, we've, say, we've Daniel, when, you, when you say high impact, um, states of criminality, are you talking about murder here? Um, give me a couple of examples yeah. of which would classify. Well, well, certainly we believe things like repeat offenders that have been identified to ensure that they are properly processed and, are, and tracked. And, of course, murders, torture cases. Your news viewers might have seen outside the Randburg Magistrates Court yesterday um, suspects and witness, um, uh, witnesses and victims in a torture case against the police who were bound to testify against those police officers were gunned down and shot, uh, shot and gunned down outside the Randburg Magistrate Court and killed, and they will no longer testify. And this is what we're talking about in terms of very, very serious um, cases, torture cases, murder cases, of which they are ample to keep the iPad busy. In fact, an investigator at the directorate told me that there are so many of these serious rape and murder allegations that they are investigating that torture cases and assault cases sometimes don't even get processed properly. So what we've proposed is that there are categories of lesser cases which are which shouldn't be neglected, don't get me wrong, but that could be um, referred back to the proper structures of a capacitated departmental internal and disciplinary system within the police service um, and that could be processed and investigated there. Now, a caveat to that is that these processes within the police are vulnerable to whitewashing and to cover up. And, and, so, and, and that, and that and perhaps, it, Daniel, is, is my final question to you, because one of the two areas uh, that you pointed out earlier on was, yes, IPID um, and their workload, but then the other one was the lack of police uh, disciplinary measures, uh, managerial structures that were not in place. So if IPID were to actually take these lesser crimes, so to speak, and hand them over to the police, are they not going to be dying there too? Because it seems like there is a culture of cover-up a culture of self-preservation within the police based on what you've said and what you've discovered. Absolutely. And so we've been sensitized to that. So there is there is this fundamental um, contestation within this argument, like, can the police be trusted to investigate themselves? And, and, and we say, by and large, they shouldn't be um, unmonitored in this role. And so we've envisaged in the proposals uh, to the amendments uh, a more proactive responsibility or uh, empowerment of the police watchdog to really have a monitoring and evaluation and integrity vetting role on the police's procedures, both in terms of the diligence of those procedures, but also the, the timeliness to ensure that um, the cases like common assault are turned around within an expeditious uh, kind of process. And so that would be, I guess, my parting shot is that in this um, bringing in the police to confirm its responsibility on discipline of its members, there certainly is still a role for IPA to play in terms of vetting, assuring the integrity of those pr processes and 
making recommendations and findings against disciplinary officials who are found wanting in executing their duties in terms of um, ensuring a high standard within the police service. Uh, Daniel Kutner, thank you so much uh, for your time and, and your insight this morning. Very much appreciated.